Hey guys, Angus here. Today we've got the video review of the Well G55 Gas Blowback SMG. Let's start off this review by going over your gun's packaging. When you first get the gun, it will arrive in the rather sturdy cardboard box shown here. The exterior of the box is fairly flashy with a large picture of the gun as well as the gun's name. When you open with the box, this is what you should see. Everything's packaged rather well inside that thick black styrofoam. Inside the box, you have your Well G55 instruction manual. This is your typical Chinese gun manual, rather poorly translated. However, it does offer you some insight on how to operate the gun, as well as some troubleshooting on the back. However, all their troubleshooting solutions are buy more accessories. Then you'll have a small bag of maybe 100 low quality 0.2 gram BBs, a metal 35 round G55 magazine, and of course, your Well G55 or MP5K itself. Now the first thing you guys are probably wondering, where can I purchase this gun? Well there's a link down below in the description to airsplat.com where you can buy this gun for about $95. So it's quite a cheap little GBBR. Now hopping straight into the review here, the first thing I do want to say is that the gun is very lightweight. It, may, it weighs in maybe 5 pounds or less. That's great. Makes the gun very, very maneuverable. And the reason for that lightweightness is because primarily, externally, the gun is composed of ABS plastic. There's really only a handful of metal pieces and those include your rear sling mount, front and rear sights, bolt, magazine release, magazine, and all the body pins of the gun. Pretty much everything else externally is composed of ABS plastic. That's uh, kind of a con because frankly, this gun feels rather cheapy, kind of toyish. The most solid pieces uh, constructed of ABS plastic externally would be your foregrip and your pistol grip. And that's great because that's where the majority of the pressure when you're holding the gun is going to be placed. The ABS plastic externals, like I said, makes it a lightweight gun. However, it does really feel cheap and toyish. Internally, everything that needs to be metal is constructed of metal. There are plastic pieces in there as well. And overall, the gun is fairly gas efficient. You have this big old mag filled all the way up with gas, and you'll get quite a few shots before you need to refill the magazine. We'll cover more of the internals in a takedown and internal discussion video that'll be posted later. But overall, you get a fairly decent external quality, lightweight, however, kind of cheapy feeling, and internals fairly gas efficient. All right, now one thing I want to stress right away before we get into the meat of the review is that this gun really isn't meant to be a primary weapon. If you're purchasing it for that reason, you're kind of purchasing it for the wrong reason. As you could have told if you watched our performance test, this gun really isn't made to be accurate at ranges farther than 60 feet. Therefore, what this is more going to be used for is, say, a primary in a CQB environment where everything's close range, or perhaps when you're in a field environment like I am, as a secondary weapon, slung on your side for those up-close situations. But otherwise, really not a primary weapon material. Now, a huge feature of the Well G55 would be its magazine because, well, that's where your ammo is stored and also, on this gas blowback gun, your gas. Now, in order to eject the mag, you want to push in the mag release, like so, and the mag will simply slide out. Now, the magazine that is included with this gun is a little bit longer than the mag that originally came with the G55. Originally, got a little stubby mag that held 21 rounds, but now it comes with a 35-round double-stack magazine. How this mag works is you would hold down the spring manually, you gotta put a little bit of force on it as it does tend to get stuck inside the mag, and drop the BBs into it. The BBs line up in twos to be fed into the gun one by one. That's great, you can hold a little bit more ammo in your mag, however, make sure your BBs don't misalign, otherwise they don't wanna feed in the gun and it'll cause your weapon to misfeed. When you release the spring, do it carefully so the BBs don't go flying out the top. As I mentioned earlier, the mag is composed of metal and overall fairly good quality. Feels rather solid. If you were to break this, I don't think anything's going to chip off unless you accidentally drop it directly on the lip, which is also metal. The gas fill is located at the bottom of the magazine. And you hear that hissing? You might be able to pick up on it. This mag leaks like crazy, not just out of the fill at the bottom, but also up top. That's a huge con, and that's one of the biggest problems that I've heard about with the G55. It's mag likes to leak, so if you buy spare mags, you might get leaky ones as well. I'm sure this is fixable. You could probably maybe Teflon tape the fill or buy some replacement parts to keep everything sealed up. You may want to lubricate it, but out of the box, I've shot this thing maybe 100, 200 rounds out of it, and already this mag's leaking. The mag doesn't leak so that it's all the way out of gas. It leaks so that you maybe have a quarter of a mag full of gas left. So you can fill this thing up to its full capacity, but chances are it's going to leak out. When you go to put the magazine back into the weapon, what you want to do is cock your gun back like so, place the mag in, 
and then release the charging handle. At that point, you can fire the weapon. All right, now once your magazine is in, the G55 is capable of firing in both the semi-automatic and full auto fire modes. How do you change fire modes? Well, you use your fire selector switch, which is located not only on the right side of the gun, but also on the left side of the gun. So you get an ambidextrous fire selector switch. Now this selector is just like any other one, it has a standard three settings. When it's facing towards the ground and on the white crossed out bullet, the weapon is on safe. The trigger can still be pulled, however the gun won't actually fire. If you were to move the selector up slightly, so it's more so facing towards the front of the gun, the weapon is on semi-automatic. The gun will fire one BB each time the trigger is squeezed. If you were to flip the selector all the way up so it's facing towards the sky and on the drawing of many bullets, the weapon is on full auto. On full auto, this gun has a great rate of fire of around 25 rounds per second. Overall, the selector is very nice. It moves easily between the settings, but it's not so loose that it'll just be flipping on and off when you're not even touching it. A couple things I want to point out is that when the gun's running low on gas, the semi-automatic tends to shoot full auto even when you're on semi. So just something to watch out for. Don't think your gun's broken if that starts happening. If you couldn't tell, this is obviously a GBB gun, and it's honestly a lot of fun to shoot. It has a significant amount of kick, and you can definitely feel the gun vibrating a little bit when you shoot it. Iron sights wise, of course the gun has them, and as I mentioned earlier, they're one of the few metal pieces on this gun. Your rear sight is a standard little drum sight. It is adjustable. You can spin it around with your finger like so in order to change the different sizes of slits you're looking through to aim up with your front sight. Your front sight, I call it the target sight. It's just a standard sight, a circle with a sight post in it. It isn't adjustable. A couple things to point out about the iron sights. They're not exactly the most things that are accurate to the gun. Being the gun isn't overall too accurate, therefore these are kind of more just aiming in that general direction. Your rear sight's pretty wobbly and it really does like to move around quite a bit and it's also kind of tough when you want to actually change it to some settings. My recommendation if you really want to accurately aim with this gun you can just purchase an mp5 claw mount to put up here and then put say a small red dot or something on here but overall if you're just going to be blasting on full auto with this gun what do you need iron sights for? Hop up? Unfortunately the G55's hop up is fixed. Some people like that saying that oh the manufacturer just adjusted my hop up for me. Personally I don't care for it. I'd rather be able to adjust my own hop up so I can set it in perfectly for the weight of BBs I'm using. Despite the fact that it does have a fixed hop up, the gun does have a rear sling mount so you can hook this thing up to a sling and sling it on your back. And it also has some decently painted on trades reading G55 caliber 6mm BB and that dreaded made in China mark. All right, so this is a pretty small gun, not too many features on it. We've covered them all, so let's go ahead and get in the final conclusion of this review. What do I think of this gun? Overall, I think it's a pretty cool gun and a decent value for $95. However, it does have quite a few flaws to it. The ABS plastic external construction makes the gun lightweight, but it also makes it feel rather toyish and cheapy. If I were to drop this from, say, a fair height, this would probably crack, especially on the receiver. Also, the mag leaks, and that's a huge con with all these, and it's generally a huge con that cannot be ignored. If I'm going to fill my mag up all the way and then have three quarters of it leak out, what's the point of even trying to fill the mag up? The double stack is nice, however, however, if it is misaligned, it causes the gun to misfeed and not fire. I also don't care for the fact that it has that big, ugly, made in China marking on there. I hate it when they do that. But otherwise, the gun is a lot of fun to shoot and pretty cool gun overall. And that's really what you're buying it for. If, say, you don't know if you're going to like the whole GBBR, this might be a good gun to start off with. It gives you a good amount of kicks. You can notice if you like that feeling or not. And it's a relatively inexpensive gun. So it's not like you're putting $200, $250 on the line, which you'd probably have to with some other GBBRs out there. For what it's meant to be used for, a CQB weapon or a secondary gun, I think this would make a pretty nice weapon. If you're trying to use it as a primary, you're kind of missing the point. If this was really, if you took the time to use it for what it's meant for, I think this would be a pretty cool gun. Just got to get over the not very good accuracy and the fixed top up. So overall, my final conclusion on this gun, if you're looking for a cheap little GBBR to just have fun with, shoot around, do a little bit of plinking with, or also use it as a secondary or a CQB weapon, the G55 wouldn't be a bad gun to look at. So this has been Death Airsoft's review of the Well G55 or MP5K. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe.